Hello, Touch Designer community. So it's been a little while since I've posted a video. I think the last one I did was before COVID. Um, I've been pretty busy doing uh, stuff in Unreal Engine and a lot of music stuff. But today I want to show you something really cool that I've just figured out, um, or kind of put it together. It's how to get uh, Deforum, which is, for those of you who don't know, is kind of like animated stable diffusion or animated mid-journey images uh, into Touch Designer. It's a really, really hacky job. Um, there is no like special web UI or special tricks or programming that I'm doing here. I'm literally just running uh, automatic 111s uh, or automatic 1111s um, uh, web UI in a web browser in Touch Designer and then um, doing a couple of things like um, reading the latest uh, output from a file and changing the, you know, switching between that file and the real time um, animation prompts. So yeah, I thought I'd just kind of walk you through here and if someone gets something from this video, that'd be awesome and I'd love to see what you guys make. So the first thing that you need to do before any of this is set up the UI. Uh, if you just go onto GitHub or do a Google search for automatic 111, automatic 1111, sorry, uh, you, can, uh, you can set it all up there. Uh, you also need to search for automatic 1111 uh, deforum and get that set up. It's pretty simple. And you can see here on the web UI, I've just got this uh, deforum extension hooked in here. Uh, I'll see if I can link those in the uh, in the description for the video. So uh, the way that it works is um, you put a prompt in as normal with uh, animated stuff like deforum. You have to specify which uh, frame of the video you want your prompt to appear at. So frame zero, a space whale, ultra realistic. Oh, it's but ultra realistic. I think it just makes it look cool. And at 30 frames, I just wanted a planet ultra realistic. What I'm doing today in this video is not um, super detailed. It's not super, you know, high res or anything. I'm just doing a kind of prototype version, um, which I hopefully will build on to show you guys how it works. Um, it's really, really short videos. These are like five seconds, pretty low quality, but it's, it's a nice proof of concept, I think. And I, I'm looking forward to kind of taking this further, maybe taking it into Unreal Engine and seeing what we can do with it. So once you have the automatic 1111 uh, set up, uh, you go to your prompts here. Um, I've got a cu couple of custom files in my uh, in my Windows Explorer folder. Um, so there's just a couple of settings I wanted to change so I don't have to change these every time, like lowering the steps so it makes the animation quicker, changing this to a you know 16 by 9 pretty much uh, aspect ratio so I don't get these horrible squares everywhere. Um, and that's, I think that's about it. Uh, maybe a couple of things in the output, but yeah, play with those settings files, those text files in your Explorer once you download 11.11 and see what you can do with it. So the first thing, uh, now we'll get into the tutorial, is um, let's just click on this, open up the parameters. And all I've done is after setting up the uh, batch file on Windows, after opening that up, you get a link uh, for this for your web UI. You just copy and paste it into the web browser in Touch Designer, which you can get from the uh, panel over here. I think it's, yeah, down here in Tools. You just drag a web browser in uh, and stick your um, link in there, stick your IP that you get given, um, URL, sorry. Once that's done, you get this nice web UI uh, into Touch Designer. So I'll get back to that in a second, but before I do that, I just wanna go over what I'm doing here um, in the, in the whole project. Um, ignore this at the bottom, first of all. Uh, I tried to do some replicating where I basically would get each image out as a movie file in uh, top, stick it in a container, uh, and then maybe kind of find a way to merge those all together or do some kind of cool compositing tricks, but that it's it's a bit too computationally heavy, so I um, I just went this route of reading straight from the file, which I will say is not perfect. Um, you'll see why in a little bit, uh, but uh, it's to do with how it reads the files and how also the forum saves the files, uh, the MP4 files, um, the name and convention and all that stuff. But we'll get to that in a minute. So once you have your web UI, I just chucked it into a crop here and. Um, chopped off the left and the right a little bit. So I'm basically just getting what's appearing in here um, and a bit of the top and yeah, the bottom looks fine. So uh, I'll get this big blue screen because once the video is done generating, uh, it just pops it in the top left corner there, it pops a kind of little preview. That was another one I've done, I think. 
and um, you get this big empty blue space. So what I've basically done is sent this crop, first of all, first and foremost, sent this crop to a top two. And I'm just getting the red, green, blue and alpha channels. And they give me this these exact values pretty much every time. I think depending on what the video you've done, like if you have a video that's like all blue, you might get slightly different videos here or if it's all red or whatever, but um, you might get slightly different uh, numerical values here. But this is pretty much what I got every single time because most of this is blue. And yeah, it's pretty consistent. 1216, 1608, 2157. Then I go to the, uh, chuck this, uh, sorry, I, I had to time slice the channels as well. Um, just it's easier to kind of visualize what's going on because these are static the whole time once the video is done generating. So I have these values that I can kind of see quite easily. So from the top two into a time slice and then into this expression. And here's where the kind of the fun stuff happens. So I, um, yeah, I uh, put this nice expression in here. It's pretty long, pretty, uh, pretty, pretty awful to look at, but it's it's very clean and it just does the job really easily. So I'll just walk you through this expression because I think it's pretty important to learn this kind of Python stuff if you're doing stuff with multiple channels and all that kind of thing. Um, so all I'm saying is true if, which means spit out a value of one, if the inputs on the first operator going in here, which is the only one is this one, so just operator zero, and the first channel, which is zero. If that is more than uh, this value, which is uh, rounding down to 10, and if it's also less than this value, rounding up to 20, 1, 2, 20, and uh, more than 1, 2, 10, then uh, true. But I also need to put and for the next channel, so I do you know the first uh, operator, which is again the time slice, uh, the second channel, second channel, and just kind of do a rounding up, you know, so it's 0. 0.16, uh, 1600 or 1600 and then 0. 0.1610 so it just gives you know if there's any slight variation it gives it a bit of leeway um, that might have to change you know depending on how many videos you're doing and what colors they they take up on the screen on your crop here um, but yeah and I just do that for each channel I think I just left the alpha channel yeah because it's pretty much always one um, and that's about it and then I just combine the channels um, in a math uh, over here. And I just gave the average because um, they're all going to be zero or one. Um, so it's just easier to do it that way. And I could even maybe remove the alpha channel from here just so it's, you know, I don't have to worry about that. Um, that's pretty much it. And that math gives me a one or a zero, depending on how these channels are read in the expression. And then I just use that to switch uh, here. And yeah, that's basically it um, for the switcher. This is the expression switcher. So now down to the file selector, this bit's a little bit trickier. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the way that Deforum saves the files, it's by you know date, uh, year, and then month, and then day, I think, and then time with you know hours, minutes, seconds, etc., etc. But for some reason, it doesn't always put it in the right order. Um, I found like I did one yesterday that was you know let's say this was like 11 and it put it above it or below it, I can't quite remember, and then this kind of messed up the file reading. So that's the only thing here that I think needs um, fine tuning at the moment. Um, otherwise it works pretty well. And yeah, that's it. You just read uh, from folder. So wherever your um, the forum is spitting out your videos to, that'll be in your settings and your computer whenever you set up automatic 1111. Um, and yeah, it's just reading that folder, all the things, and I'm just taking the movie extensions. And then I'm selecting the newest one, basically. Uh, I think most of these should already be in there. Uh, this one at least will be. Um, this one I just wrote in, it's me.par.row index end. And that is taking this value from the same um, operator and just basically giving it the same one. So it only takes that first row. Um, and this one should already be set up, so whatever it is. Uh, again, this might need a little bit of work, but we'll see how we go. Then I'm just putting that to a movie file uh, in, and I'm just selecting the first column 
I think that's columns. And I think that's rows. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I guess it's, yeah, I think that's right. Columns and then rows. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> that could be completely wrong. Um, you have to play around with these values as well, just to make sure you're getting, you know, this, this is what you want, the file location. Because um, usually with a movie file in, you know, you open up this, you select your movie, whatever. And that's pretty much it. And then just putting that to a null to make sure, you know, if we want to do any kind of compositing or any other cool stuff. Um, and then we just send that to the switch. That's pretty much it. Um, in the movie file in, there's a couple of settings, which I changed. Uh, I think everything here was the same. Make sure that's on cycle when you have the uh, on the trim um, parameters page. Make sure that's set to cycle for the uh, extended right. That means basically at the end, it's going to just go back to the beginning. Um, and on the play, make sure you set your loop crossfade to 0.2. That was pretty important because if I set it to zero here, you'll see it just kind of, boop, it just kind of snaps back. But if I set it to 0.2, it does this pretty cool fade, which makes it look, you know, like a real loop. Uh, again, you can play with that setting. You can go pretty high with that. But bear in mind, it does take off some FPS, um, depending on the content of the video and the resolution and everything. I find 0.2 is a good value for now. All right, so let's make something new. Uh, and then all I'm doing, sorry, is uh, switch to null and then just viewing that null. You could put that to a window output, you could put that to a Catan mapper, Cantan mapper, whatever it's called, and do some cool projection mapping with your the forum animations. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the whole thing. Um, so, here I've just put a couple of templates because this is exactly what you need to put in the prompts for the forum. Um, I will, before I get to the prompts, I will just go quickly over the settings, uh, my settings at least, just to make it run really quick, really smooth. It takes about one minute for it to generate uh, if I do it this way. So firstly, I reduce the steps to 10, which uh, again, I'm not a programmer um, or anything like that, but I think the steps basically reduce everything they reduced like how the prompts are read and translated into images they reduced uh like how kind of how the the kind of quality of the images as well not the resolution but like the quality of you know what they're making so if you say put a whale in if it was stepped at you know at 100 it would make a nice really nice whale put in 10 it's going to make this kind of blobby fish monster which is fine with me for what we're doing today uh, again, height 640, 384, uh, all of this again comes from the settings files uh, in my Windows Explorer. And um, that's pretty much it. I keep this on 2D. I don't know. I don't want to mess with 3D just yet. Everything's just kind of bog standard. Uh, haven't changed much. Um, yeah, control net, uh, that's a whole other thing. Might do another video on that at some point. That'll be cool. Hybrid video, I don't know what any of this stuff does really. Um, I would like to mess with it at some point. And the output, um, I kept the FPS at 12 and left everything the same. Uh, I unchecked keep images from the upscaling. Um, even though I'm not upscaling, I just want to take off anything, trim off all the fat, you know, trim off all the extras. Um, so I just have the very, very basic thing running. And I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, there's a lot of settings here. Um, oh, make sure you uh, <laughs> point your FFmpeg um, installation location to your uh, diffusion UI folder. Uh, I found for some reason when I loaded this up, it was pointed to some other thing. Maybe I've got another version installed, um, but I just had to change that to make sure you actually get the video output. And that's basically it. Um, yeah, so let's give it a go. Let's try something new. I'm just gonna make up something completely here. Uh, I've just got, again, a little template here. Uh, all you need to do is put your prompts in between these brackets. So I'm gonna just use this one. This is my quick one. Let's try an apple and a human walking on Mars. Very hacky, it's gonna look awful, but it's just a proof of concept, as I said. So copy, stick it in here, zoom in a bit, and go to prompts, paste it. Now, when I hit generate, what it's gonna do is, oops, I copied the uh, text box as well. When I hit generate here, what it's going to do is um, 
it's going to switch over to the real-time generation here because these values read by the expression are not going to be valid anymore it's going to have some different colors instead of this solid blue so this is going to go to zero this is going to go to zero and this is going to go to the first input which is our real time uh, one last thing one last thing before I click this is if you go into settings uh, for your web UI go into your uh, live previews you've got to make sure these are setting these your settings are exactly the same as this um, I found even changing one or two things here can mess up the live preview and it won't show you what you want to show so show progress bar that doesn't really matter but definitely show live previews of the created images uh, image sorry um, don't not sure about this that's you can leave that off or on I don't think it makes a difference this has to be set to one so it shows you every image as it's updating um, I find this a bit faster but you know I think either either of these will do but this is the kind of optimal one I found um, and prompt as well um, so it shows you know each each uh, iteration I guess um, I set this to 100 play around this number a little bit but I think this is pretty much exactly what you need to have um, all right, let's try it out. So if I theoretically, I mean, hopefully, click generate, it should, if after about five seconds, start reading the file. There we go. So we've got an apple. It's pretty nice. You can see it's kind of changing in real time, which is really nice. And when it's done, all things being well, it should read the new video from here. So. As it's, uh, I could skip it, but it actually runs pretty quickly. It's like less than a minute with these very, very, you know, quick fire settings. Uh, so it should turn into a sort of a human walking on Mars or something. Um, it's very low resolution, this preview. You can change that in the settings, but again, it depends on your VRAM and all that stuff. I am running on a very humble 2060, uh, RTX 2060 laptop, so I'm not going to go crazy with it. Uh, but cool, we got some kind of awesome space stuff going on here. I really like this one actually. Uh, I guess the red apple and the red planet, you know, they, they work well together in the prompts. I don't know, way over my head all this uh, diffusion stuff, but I think it's amazing. So here we go, moment of truth. Let's see if it reads the new file. Nope, it did not read the new file. So I still need to play with the settings in here. Uh, let's try minus two. There we go. And there we have it. Um, and you can see that's kind of looping really nicely. Oh, I like how they've got like a bite out of the apple as well. And it turns into some kind of, you know, some kind of uh, core of the planet that's missing or something. I don't know. And then you've got all these moons and rocks and the sky. And phew, it's just amazing, this to forum stuff. So, yeah, once I have this kind of file reading system sorted out, um, there may be a way to change that in the settings. Um, I think we'll be good to go to do real time visuals uh from text uh real-time video animation from text which i just think is blowing absolutely mind-blowing um yeah if you enjoyed this video give it a like give it a subscribe and give me a subscribe and i'll see you next time thanks guys